The last part is whether we can actually just think about avatars, holograms, how we can connect in different ways. We've seen, of course, that within the pandemic now, we're all doing remote uh, access for Zoom and other platforms. I've been talking about this for a while, so we've got to be getting away from face-to-face. -face. It has to be more remote. Telemedicine's obviously come in, and we're seeing a, a kind of change in the framework of teleconsultations. This is the futurist from 1924, looking at um, how we're going to communicate with our patients 100 years ago. What they're describing, of course, was telemedicine, and now we're seeing this explosion of telemedicine uh, in clinical practice, up to 8,000% more episodes of telemedicine being used around the world. So this is great for us, but what about replacing that even further? We talk about holograms and avatars, this whole concept of this kind of teleportation or holoportation, which I have been thinking about for a while. So this is an example of that. This is back in 2017, where we use the HoloLens to transmit myself as an avatar. Uh, and we had three people from three time zones, India, um, US and London converted, converged together uh, in a virtual space. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Safi. So the HoloLens itself really allows us to reshape the way we connect people, we communicate with people, and also to be used in teaching and training. Initially, when you put the whole lens on, it feels a bit strange, but actually within a few minutes, it becomes quite normal. It feels like you're just discussing cases with people in the same room, for example, like we do in normal hospital practice. We can come in and actually look at this content in full 3D. And obviously when you're working in, in this case, the medical field, having a full 3D understanding of a situation, for example, is really much more powerful in solidifying how you want to navigate it in your mind. So that was really kind of, I guess, avatars, polyglonal images, and it wasn't as realistic as it could be, but it showed the concept of what's possible in the MR device. What about creating a, a kind of digital, a human or digital twin? This is a process of photogametry, as I'm sure you're aware of, recreating a 3D model. And this is obviously what I did a few years ago. And imagine that being powered by AI or voice technology or even natural language processing to be able to be uh, sufficiently uh, powered to enable teaching or training or even remote support. This is, um, so take that further forward, taking that hologram further forward, you recreate the image, uh, this was using um, uh, a, some software from Double Me, uh, a company based out in London and South Korea, looking at how we can use, say, uh, almost like a holographic image and transporting that using 5G in this case, uh, showing that we can do using that technology. Oops, I'll play that again. <laughs> Shafi, have a look at this. Yeah, let me have a look over your shoulder. Oh yeah, I see what's going on there. I think I'll give some advice. Carl, no problems. Thanks for calling me. So that was, that was showing you kind of, I guess, the, the hologram. Um, it's a bit grainy. It'll get better, of course, and it'll improve. But now we're seeing Spatial, XIO, and others now in this kind of virtual world using virtual conferences. And again, there's not been a mass adoption because you need a headset, it's difficult, but it shows you the concept what's possible. During the pandemic, I worked with this company um, called Atheo, so how we could almost reproduce some better avatar almost in this virtual space uh, and be a less face-to-face. Uh, -face. That's what we could do with the COVID. Hey, Dr. Ahmed, good to see you again. Hey, Harrison, so good to see you. Where are you? I'm in New York, I'm in New York, I'm in New York. I'm in London, uh, so good to see you. I think we've got Ian here as well, haven't we? Hi, Ian. Hey, guys. I'm in uh, downtown Atlanta right now. Thanks for joining me. I forgot my magic leap, but I've got my phone handy, so joining you through here. Thanks for, jo thanks for joining us. Should we have a look at some images to help us in this regard? Let's uh, try, I'll just put up the image of the um, uh, virus itself. Just to show what it looks like, so, is essentially countries across here. These are China, Iran, Italy, and South Korea. So as you can see, this is kind of 
the future concept. As we, as we get further down, we're now looking at the kind of digital humans being uh, being made using all these processes we described already by photogrammetry, capture images, uh, adding some voice tech in the back end. And we're seeing this kind of almost um, almost lifelike appearances now. And th these may be the future, of course. Hi, I'm future. Roman, a digital human brought to life by soul machines. With me, you can experience AI like never before because I learn and react emotionally like humans do. So I guess as a kind of preamble for the sessions, I'm looking forward to all the sessions today, of course, great speakers coming to you. But actually what we're looking at, and this is a quote by William Gibson, uh, who's a, a Canadian author who coined the term cyberspace in the past. He describes this future has been already here, that just the uneven distribution of it at the moment. And for all of us involved in XR and technologies that uh, are future exponential technologies, it's for us to redesign that and make sure that we push out more widely as a community. So that was kind of my opening, um, really just half an hour of introduction. And of course, all the speakers later today will take the further forward and delve deeper, the deeper dive, uh, et cetera. I'm happy to take some questions for a few minutes uh, and then we can hand over to our next speaker uh, in about 10 minutes time. Let's go to the chat and see, uh, are there any questions from Maliba at the moment? Any, you can unmute yourself and speak to me if you want to or you can indeed just write in the chat.